Hello. I've been playing around with the clean flight source code a little bit lately and I managed to get some support built in for the good old NRF24 L01 modules. Um, and as you can see it's connected directly to the flight controller board here which is quite convenient. Um, now clean flight does work on quite a large number of flight controller boards but what I'm going to talk about in this video is only going to be applicable to the flip 32 at least at this point that's the only board that I've tried it on uh, it may perhaps work on some other types of boards depending on whether you can get access to the right pins but for now let's just say it's only going to work on the flip 32 uh, so to have a closer look at this board and the pins that are in use. Uh, I went through quite a few different attempts to get this to work on I squared C and on the SPI there and so on but I ended up going with a software SPI approach using these four pins here which would normally be pins 5 to 8 on the receiver header, those ones there. and. <clears throat> I've arranged them to be clock select, um, no, chip select not or slave select, and then clock and miso and mossy like that. And you'll also need to get ground from, I guess, somewhere along here. And you'll also need a 3 volt, preferably 3 volt, but 3.3 volts is okay as well, power supply for the VCC pin of the radio module. Now, one place you can get that, at least on the board that I have, I've found that this pin here is 3.3 volts, so that's that's what I'm using at the moment. You can see I've uh, my red wire is plugged into that pin there. That's how it's running at the moment. Uh, but I noticed that this diagram that I found to make this video is showing that as 5 volts. So I'm thinking that perhaps some revisions of the Flip32 do have this pin as 5 volts, I'm not sure. Um, so you might want to just be careful about that because you shouldn't give more than 3.3 volts to the RF24 modules. Uh, so just check with a multimeter to be doubly sure of what voltage is on this pin if you're going to use this approach. But I would recommend that instead of doing that, really what you should be doing is, um, what I'm going to do at least, is use a separate BEC to power the RF24 module, especially if you're going to be using it as a transceiver so that it's going to be doing some transmitting as well, to t maybe to send some data back to the transmitter. In that case you'd want to power it from a separate bit, just in case you uh, find that this pin is unable to supply as much power or as much current as is necessary for transmitting. And I like to use these tiny little step down converters oh sorry that's how tiny they are um, these are pretty neat they can supply a decent amount of power and even when they are stuck like this with a little cap on the side my, it's my cute little deck that I made they're still pretty small uh, so I would recommend powering um, like that instead rather than using this this pin on there uh, okay so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try and keep this video brief. Um, and if there's any questions that come up, you can just ask me, and I'll maybe elaborate on things that I've, I've forgotten. Um, but for now, let's just look at how you could quickly get this running. Uh, you do, of course, have to make your own transmitter to get this to work, which is kind of a down point. <laughs> um, but the the upside is that you can completely control the contents of the packets that you're sending between your transmitter and your receiver. Uh, so in the link in the description you'll find a zip file that contains this stuff here. Uh, so just to look at these in order we have the folder here CheapAss Transmitter. This is the sketch that I used for my CheapAss uh, cheap quadcopter build a few months ago. Uh, it's basically the same. I haven't really changed anything in there, in there at all and that uses the RF24 library this is of course an Arduino sketch I should point out and that uses the RF24 library which I just put in here just to just in case you didn't have it it's one less thing that you need to go and download 
so this will of course need to be put into the libraries folder of your Arduino installation before you try and build this sketch. Um, and below that we have the, the clean flight hex that you can flash onto your flip32 that I've pre-built so you can try that one. Um, and you'll also need to have a slightly modified version of the clean flight configurator because you need to select in the clean flight configurator that you want to use this type of receiver. So let's just have a look at how you can get that. Uh, okay, so to get the modified configurator, you can go to my GitHub fork of clean flight configurator. And at the moment, this stuff is in branches of its own, so you'll need to click on branch, and from there you'll have to select NRF24 like that. And then over the side here you can click download zip, and just double check that you're getting the NRF24 branch. And I've already downloaded this, or I, well, I don't need to download it. I have the source code that I made myself here. So uh, let's just assume that I downloaded it into that folder there. And then in your Chrome extensions, you can just type Chrome colon slash slash extensions into the URL bar of the Chrome browser to get to this view and then you'll need to check the developer mode checkbox there so you get these extra buttons and then you can click load unpacked extension and then choose the clean flight configurator folder that you downloaded uh, from github into so when I click that or when I open that rather we'll see that the clean flight configurator app has been added to my Chrome apps. You can actually have more than one of these at a time, I noticed. So you can have the official Clean Flight configurator side by side with this modified one. Um, it's a bit hard to know which is which, I guess, when they're lied side by side. But anyway, uh, so let's start that up. And so to load the hex file onto your Flip32 board, you'll first have to go into Firmware Flasher and load Firmware Local and then you'll have to um, where are we? Oh. Uh, let's see if we can okay, so in this folder that was the first download we have of course this hex file so I'm just going to open that one and then this button will be enabled and you should just be able to click flash firmware and then it will load that hex file onto the flip32 for you if it doesn't every now and then I find that it doesn't first thing you could do is just try disconnecting the USB and reconnecting it that might work uh, if it still doesn't work what you can then do is try uh, disconnect the USB so that there's no power to the board and then just hold something across these two pins here the boot the boot pins so that these are connected plug the USB in and you should find that instead of doing the lights flashing thing that it normally does it just sh it just turns on the one blue LED only there to have it into bootloader mode or flasher mode and then check no no reboot sequence and then do flash firmware I found that 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 works every time even if nothing else does. Anyway, so once the hex is flashed onto the board, you can then click connect, and we should be yep ready. Now, in the configuration tab, you should find if you're using the correct configurator version, you should see this row showing NRF24 in the bottom of the receiver mode table. Uh, I already have that selected here, so I'll just go straight over to the receiver tab, but otherwise you would need to select that and save the settings like that. Um, but in the receiver tab, let's see what we've got here. Uh, we have a total of 14 channels, which is um, what I've currently set things up to use as the defaults. 
um, like I say, if you want to change any of this information, you can, but you're going to have to um, get the clean flight source and, and, and build that yourself. But let's just see what that does at the moment. Right. So if I turn my transmitter on, we should have connection. So we've got the four stick channels at the top there as usual. And then I have a couple of switches, a dial, just the one dial. I haven't connected this one at the moment. Uh, and then the rest of the channels I'm not I'm not using. I don't have enough switches on here to do anything with them. Uh, but you can see that you can get a total of 14 channels pretty easily with this. Uh, so as far as um, using everything with the default settings goes, that's about all you need to know, I think. Uh, of course you need to make your own transmitter so it's a, it's a bit more to it than I'm, than I'm making out really but uh, if you want to change or customize the contents of the packets that you're sending uh, I'm not going to go into the details of how you can build CleanFlight itself because there is a fair bit of information around on the net that you can use to um, figure that out but to get the source code for this particular modification of CleanFlight that I've made you can go to my fork of clean flight on github and once again select from this branch tab um, select NRF24 and then you can download that or clone it I guess and in that case you should be looking at some source code that has in it a file called NRF24L01 this will be in the um, RX folder so at the top of this file there's some settings you can change to modify what uh, what goes on here. Um, this is the this defines the pins that it uses for the software SPI. I wouldn't change that unless you know what you're doing. But just down here we have something that's a little bit more familiar, at least if you've had anything to do with the uh, NRF24 module or the um, cheap ass quadcopter build that I did a few months ago. So we have the packet structure which is just seven bytes the first six bytes are used as analog channels and then the last byte is used as a bit flag to give us eight binary switches so you can modify that to your heart's content as long as it doesn't go over 32 bytes um, and then down here we have a function called reset payload which will uh, apply these settings to the payload contents if the uh, if there has been no radio communication for in this case one second so you can change that timeout if you like as well but this is kind of like a fail safe feature um, the main part of the clean flight source code has its own fail safe so this is not strictly necessary but I find it's the fail safe is might as well have two of them um, just below that we have this function start as primary receiver and in here we set the channel data rate auto -ac to be off and then there's a pipe number here that we're using as well so if you're going to be flying more than one of these things at the same time you'll want to change the pipe number and the channel or at least one of them so that they don't mess each other up when they're being used at the same time um, that's about all that's really necessary there and then in the function here set RC data from payload this is where we decide what to tell the flight controller to do based on the contents of the packet uh, so the six analog channels are basically we just convert that from a value of 0 to 255 into a value from 1000 to 2000 so that's these values are all from 1000 to 2000 so that's all this that's all this is doing here uh, and then for the the eight final channels there we just say uh, we look at the bits that are set in that last byte and uh, we either set it to 2000 or to 1000 to um, give us the result over there on the right hand side uh, so I think that's about all I intended to look at in this video like I say um, I don't really know how many people would actually be interested in trying this so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail right now but if you want to know something 
more about it perhaps uh, just let me know and I'll try and elaborate on whatever information may be missing anyway thanks for watching and uh, see you next time